Hello, hello, good day, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you again. It is the 20th, what's today's day, Doc? Yeah, I think it's the 24th. The 24th, sorry, 24th. is it the 24th? It's the 24th of October mm -hmm. of the year 2018. I'm your host, Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, and I'm here with Dr. Bonner, Rayford Bonner, uh, who is an adjunct professor and a fellow at the Urban Peace Lab, also associate director. He'll be talking about his expertise, and he has a daytime job too, a full-time job as well. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. He'll tell us tell us about that. But I want to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that you're watching the the, the Peaceful World Movement show. But it's the Shy Peace Show was brought to you by the Peaceful World Movement, located at one one four five one South Michigan Avenue in Chicago, on the south side of Chicago, in Roseland. And you can reach us at PO Box at two zero six three zero eight, Chicago, Illinois. 60628 and we have a we have a very interesting show for you Charlie Allen is going to join us calling us all the way from Australia I think it's like 10 o'clock in the morning 9 o'clock sometime in Australia Charlie he'll tell you about himself but he is from the Institute of Economics and Peace we're going to be talking about the the, the, is, the, the issues that are relevant to economic and peace but meanwhile Brother Bonner, welcome, the doc. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, doctorate in what? Uh, curriculum and instruction education from Loyola University. Mm -hmm. um, master degree in business administration. Mm -hmm. Master degree in training and development. And I use all of it in my work at North Park University and the work at the Urban Peace Lab. Right. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure to have Dr. Bonner here with us. And he will be co-hosting with me. Uh, when, when Charlie calls in, maybe in about three minutes. But you know, can I can I show you guys something? Can, is okay? Can it's I okay. Show, it's okay. All right. So so I'm going to show you guys something, right? I was over in in Houston, Texas, doing the keynote address for the Dominica Association uh, 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 in, uh, in Houston, and what happened is that they gave me an award, right? An award for helping the Dominica Houston Association, the Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, for achieving excellence for the success that I contributed to them there. And I just wanted to say a little shout out to the folks of, Dom of Dominican Heritage in Houston uh, for being able to do the things that they do to help create a better country. And I'm wearing a shirt here that I bought at the Divine Sh Store in the Art of Living uh, Center in in, um, in Bangalore, but this shirt I'm calling the Mandar jacket. Wait, did you go to India? Yes, I was in India. I didn't tell you about that. Yeah. Well, well, you know what? The last couple of shows we have, shows we have had, we interviewed people who were in India with me. I mean, I've been so fascinated by the experiences. I just decided we're going to line up a few shows, and next year, next week, we'll probably talk to someone who we met in India, and then afterwards, we'll talk to folks um, right here in, in Chicago. Folks, we want to remind you that this is a live call-in show. We want to remind you that the number three one two seven three eight. 1060 is the number that you call in. And I'm wearing my Manda jacket. So now I told Manda, what is the real name of this jacket? And he told me the name of the current prime minister and a, and a previous prime minister the jacket is named after. See what I said to him? I said, man, I don't know this dude, so I'm going to call this my Manda jacket. Right? So that's a new name. Do the people at home know who Mandar is? Uh, maybe not, but they may be able to find out, but that's a good thing. Okay. Tell, tell them who Mandar is. Mandar is a gentleman who has a organization that is committed to peaceful solutions or nonviolent solutions to help improve communities as well uh, shopping it with local law enforcement to see if it can bridge the gap between certain police and community issues that impact their ability to work together. Uh, Dr. St. John was uh, fortunate to be able to travel to India for the peaceful um, nonviolent summit that Dr. Mandar hosted uh, as a part of his annual conference. And so, uh, did you meet anybody? Yeah, you were supposed to come with me, man. But I, I heard you just didn't want to. You didn't want to hang out with me, man. So you just decided not to go. But you know, yeah. But I met. Um, you know, we uh, Deepak, who was one of the organizers. Okay. We spoke. Uh, we spoke with him on that first show. And the brother named Asante, um, he was there. He's doing a, a program, getting young people to you know uh, understand the mask that they hide about themselves. Okay. Um, and and today we'll be talking to Charlie, right, from the Institute for Economics and Peace. And then next week we wish to have another gentleman that's in this actually in the Chicago area 
that's doing training on Blue Courage. Michael should be joining us here. So tell us a little bit, where are you from? You didn't just show up here, you were not born yesterday. I mean, I'm from Chicago, okay. uh, born and raised in Woodlawn. Shout out to Woodlawn, Chicago. Oh, All right. Um, Attended high school, Simeon Career Academy. Well, actually, let me change that. Simeon Vocational High School, uh, the warehouse. Uh, proud products like uh, Derrick Rose, mm -hmm. uh, Nick Anderson, okay. uh, Benji Wilson, mm -hmm. all products of Simeon Career Academy. And uh, formal education, mostly here in the Chicago area. Uh, don't let people tell you that there aren't great colleges and universities in the Chicagoland area. Phenomenal schools, and uh, I am a product of Chicago Public Schools. Yeah, and, and Dr. Bonner, um, Dr. Bonner, we have a caller coming in, but um, when Dr. Bonner was hired to teach um, methods and is, uh, teach uh, urban communities and crime at university, I was just flattered to be able to have such an intelligent brother join our midst. But we have a caller. Can you welcome our caller? Uh, let's tell the caller they're there. Oh, caller, are you there? <laughs> Yes, hello, Peter. Hey, it sounds like, why are you talk? you sound that way? It doesn't sound like you're from Chicago, bro. Where are you from? Who's this? Is this Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charlie Allen here calling from Melbourne, Australia. But, hey, Charlie, you can use the line, but you have to credit it to its author, okay? Whenever someone tells you you have an accent, you need to tell them that the accent is actually in your ears. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Charlie, thank you, thank you so much for for calling in and um, tell all tell our listeners and our viewers a little bit of who you are. Yes, yeah, certainly, Peter. And uh, uh, I, I, is Rayford there with you? Is he? I am. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Rick, Dr. Barner is here with me. Yes. Uh, Dr. Barner, nice to meet you. Um, Charlie Allen's my name. I work for the Institute for Economics and Peace, uh, and my role there is uh, the Director of Partnerships. And uh, really, my focus is around on promoting positive peace. So, to talk about uh, uh, the Institute for Economics and Peace, uh, we're a, an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit uh, think tank. Uh, we're dedicated to shifting the world's focus to peace as a positive, achievable and tangible measure for human well-being and progress. Really, we're about measuring, costing, uh, peace, so peace builders can, can better manage peace. Yes, uh, I was just showing uh, the website uh, to, to the people, um, and uh, when they, um, I have the website up again, and people, if you go on to economicsandpeace.org, you can see the Global Peace Index of 2018. You'll see a report on the Business and Peace 2018, ter um, um, Global Terrorism 2017, 2016. A very interesting one I saw, Charlie, was Mexico Peace Index of 2017. I'm from Dominica, man. And I was looking for the Dominica Peace Index of 2017. I guess you got you to tell us that the Chicago Peace Index. Yeah, Chicago Peace Index is probably the U.S. Index. You guys always talk about violence in Chicago. I hope you have some Peace Index for Chicago, huh, Charlie? Do you, do you, do you? <laughs> uh, we did. So our work is, is predominantly uh, macro research looking at uh, nation states uh, globally. Right, so right. with the, the Global Peace Index uh, and the Positive Peace Report mm -hmm. and the Global Terrorism Index, uh, we measure uh, 163 nation states. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we compare them uh, from the most peaceful to, to the least peaceful. Mm -hmm. Now, we have done uh, subnational work, uh, a subnational uh, peace index for the United States that was back in 2012. Uh, that was a one-off piece of research that we did. Uh, so, uh -huh. We've done subnational research for, for Mexico, as, as you've already pointed out. We've done subnational research for uh, UK. But also with uh, when we did the United States Peace Index in 2012, uh, we brought the data down to uh, uh, metropolitan statistical areas. So we actually, in 2012, uh, measured uh, peacefulness in, in Chicago or the Chicago um, uh, metropolitan statistical area. Oh, you have that? Okay, for uh, metropolitan statistical areas as well. So, Charlie, let's tell people, let's step back a little bit and tell people, you know, what is the Peace Index? What does it take into account? Certainly. So, uh, the glo well, we measure peace in two ways. Uh, we, we measure peace from uh, a negative perspective uh, and a positive perspective. 
and really that is is where our research starts is is when people uh, think of peace they tend to think of a, a negative definition of, of peace mm. that is a, an absence of war uh, we look at that a little bit differently uh, we look at uh, uh, negative peace as being the abs absence of violence or the absence of fear of violence mm. so we also measure peace uh, from a positive perspective uh, so looking at what are the conditions the attitudes the institutions and structures that a, a society or a community require uh, to sustain uh, to sustain peace. So Charlie, when you talk about uh, negative peace, because Sarah, I know Sarah had a Sarah had a question in there. Sarah and I were were reading on the way here. She's very good at reading without without getting car sick, right? So we were reading about negative peace, and we were like, "What is that?" We didn't see the definition there, but from what you have said, it sounds to me that negative peace is really discussing about the lack of peace. Is that correct? Uh, yes, so uh, the, 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 the definition that we work with is the absence of violence or fear of violence and, and in building the, the Global Peace Index we use 23 indicators across three domains mm. uh, across to, to measure and compare the 163 nation states. Hmm. So Dr. Barna, are you interested in what we've learned of 2017-18 about this idea of um, negative and positive peace? What, what, are you, what are your thoughts on this? What have you heard so far? Well, it's really more about positioning and what are some of those uh, domains and those indicators and how do they uh, compare to some of the issues here in Chicago? Um, I think hmm. anything is of value. However, we need to make sure that uh, application is appropriate. And I'm not saying that it isn't. I think that the work that he's done is uh, phenomenal. We just need to figure out uh, how do we apply that to Chicago. Well, you, so you want to get a better sense of exactly what it is that they measured. Yes, exactly. So what are, so what are some of those, ex some, some, give us some more micro discussion about the particular things that you measure. Yes, yeah, certainly. So with the, the Global Peace Index, uh, we, as I said, we use 23 indicators uh, across three domains. Uh, predominantly the, the indicators are uh, quantitative uh, indicators uh, that we look at militarisation, so I said it's in internal aspects as well as uh, external aspects. Uh, I should add that all of our research is, is available on, on our website and you can real, drill deep, uh, deeply into the research. Uh, it is complex and, and uh, we probably can't cover up in the time we have uh, allotted, but certainly we look at internal indicators uh, as well as external indicators. Uh, so some of the internal indicators would be, uh, and, and particularly when I look at the measures uh, for Chicago, uh, some of the, the relevant uh, internal indicators are the incarceration rate, mm -hmm. uh, number of uh, police employees, uh, per, which is standardised per head of comp, uh, population, mm -hmm. uh, violent crimes, uh, including homicides. So we, we look at uh, uh, those internal local indicators when, when, we're, when we're measuring uh, yeah. negative peace. So, so Charlie, one of the things, uh, and Dr. Barna, one of the things that I, we were reading when we were, we were getting here is that, the, well, there's a, I think it's a 0.24% uh, uh, of, of decline in, in peace. Uh, uh, peace index in the world from in 2017 to 2018 but what is interesting is that the the the, the worst places if I may say that uh, on the on the on the line on the on the on the spectrum of peace index the worst the bottom worst places have, have gotten 12 like 12 since since 2008 I've gotten like 12 percent worse and then the best places have improved a little bit is, is that accurate? And if so, what, you th what have you learned that drives? Why are some of the worst places doing even worse over the last 10 years and the, and the, the yep. places that are doing better are doing a little bit better? Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, so, and, and that's a, a good read. Uh, when you look, uh, 92 countries have, have deteriorated mm -hmm. uh, in 2018, uh, while 71 countries have improved. Uh, and you're right, it's those deteriorating countries that, uh, uh, that drag uh, uh, world peace down, if you like. So uh, looking at how we improve, that, that is really what leads to our positive peace report. Mm. Uh, because if you want to understand what uh, uh, makes uh, countries peaceful, uh, 
it's pointless starting violence or, or fear of violence. Mm -hmm. uh, so th that uh, is the, the power of our, our research is we, from looking and understanding which are the most peaceful countries, we can understand what correlates to, to, that, uh, to that peace. So, and that led to the design of the, uh, the Positive Peace Report or the Positive Peace Index. And we were able to identify what are the predominant correlates uh, across uh, eight domains, uh, which we call our pillars of positive peace, mm. uh, that lead to, to peaceful communities. Uh, as I said before, that's built on that, uh, that definition of uh, the attitudes, institutions and structures that create and sustain peaceful societies. Yes, Charlie, I'm sure Dr. Barnett probably wants to know how we connect this peace index with economic indicators. But before we, before we do that, I want to remind our viewers that we were watching the Peaceful World Movement show, the Shy Peace show put together by the Peaceful World Movement. Peaceful World Movement is located at 11451 South Michigan Avenue. Still a lot of work to be done in the building at PO Box 206308 in Chicago, Illinois 60628. You can reach us at 716603. 0992 or at www.shypeace.net. Dr. Bonner, what are your thoughts? Are you interested in the connection? Well, what, are, what thoughts you have? Well, one question I have is, while the research is out there, what have been some of the challenges or impediments to getting policymakers in these countries to infuse what you are presenting to them as a way to improve um, their communities overall? Yes, yeah, and uh, and thanks for the question. Certainly, with our, our positive peace index, uh, we, we have used that framework uh, down at uh, community level uh, mm -hmm. as well as policy or strategy level to uh, to influence uh, policy outcomes to influence uh, uh, resourcing decisions. Uh, certainly, the the positive peace framework is is flexible. Uh, uh, across that range of actors, whether it's uh, community focused or at policy level. Um, certainly uh, we're in conversations uh, uh, with uh, nation states and some nation states already use our, our framework to in inform uh, their policy. As is, uh, we have positive peace uh, workshops planned coming up in the, in the next number of months down at uh, community level mm. uh, to, to work with communities to, to, to build more to self-determine uh, to build more positive communities. Mm -hmm. So, uh, f uh, viewers, let me remind you that this is a live call-in show. You can reach us at 312-738-1060. We're talking to Charlie, Charlie Allen that is uh, now in Australia. Uh, he is a, a director of partnerships with the uh, Institute for Economic and Peace. And we are discussing about the impact of what is positive peace, the impact on positive peace, how it can grow. So please call in with any, any questions that you have. So, so Charlie, tell us a bit about, we heard a little bit about what negative peace and positive peace, what they are. Um, now, what is the connection between the peace index and economic prosperity? Certainly. Um, so I think a good way to, to start or to start the answer to that question is to look at uh, the the global economic impact of violence, mm. uh, and for in the the 2018 Global Peace Index, uh, the global cost or global economic impact of violence was uh, at 14.76 uh, trillion dollars. Mm. So it's, that uh, is a, a massive amount. So we're talking, uh, when you look at it at uh, global GDP, it's 12.4% of uh, the global GDP uh, or uh, $1,988 per person for every person on the planet. Mm. So, so they're big numbers. If you bring that down to, to the, the, the local level and start thinking about the, the economic impact of violence at, at the local level uh, and think about what it costs to incarcerate a, a person for a year, uh, I know in my country that, that figure sits at about $180,000 uh, per annum. Uh, the cost to put a police officer uh, on the street, about $250,000 per annum. The cost of a, uh, a homicide uh, investigation and prosecution, 
1.2 million dollars. I don't suggest we shouldn't do those things. Absolutely, we should do those things. But uh, if uh, if we can reduce the amount of those things that we have to do because the community is more peaceful, then that creates a virtuous cycle of, of more resources to put into to health, to to education, to uh, generating uh, employment. Yeah, but and Charlie, one of the things that I saw in the report is that. Not only are issues as, as violence uh, um, important and, and their considerations in this peace index, but um, the, the lack of corruption, right? Stability in government, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And 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 having uh, people being able to have, to express their freedom of speech, to exercise um, their freedom, right? So it Absolutely. seems that there is a cost to for those types of infractions but there are also benefits that that can be that if those problems are reduced that that there, these are resources that could be recycled into other uh, pro-social components of, of 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 our society is that part of the idea of why we discuss this issue of a peace index and what it benefits can be to society absolutely absolutely uh, so we refer to or refer to that as a uh, a virtuous cycle, which was a term I used just before. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the the less resources you, you're using to, because uh, of the impact of violence, uh, the more resources you have uh, for pro-social mm -hmm. uh, 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 concepts. So, 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 and the reverse is also true. Uh, the more uh, the more you're spending on violence containment. Uh, well, it, it creates a vicious cycle uh, because then there is less resources to spend on, on pro-social uh, interventions. Yeah, Charlie, it's, it's um, all good things. You know, time flies when you're having fun. Um, so, so just tell us a little bit as we wind up because we just have about a minute, minute and a half or so to go. Um, um, Dr. Barnett's question about the relevance to Chicago. The listeners are saying, okay, this is great, but how does this relate to Chicago? Yes. Um, I did mention before the the uh, United States Peace Index that uh, uh, we did back in in 2012, so it is somewhat dated. But uh, when you look at Chicago uh, measured against the uh, the 61 um, metropolitan statistical areas in in the US, uh, Chicago was at 52 of, of the 61, mm. uh, and where Chicago didn't fare well in that score was was certainly uh, its homicide rate. Uh, it's its violent crime rate, uh, incarceration rate, and the number of police employees standardised per, per head of population. Uh, so certainly there's some, some data relevant to Chicago that could, could well be improved that would, uh, to turn some of those indicators around, would create that, that virtuous cycle within the Chicago area. Yes, Dr. Barney, any, any other final, quick final thoughts as we wind down in a few seconds here? No, really just how do we take what has been researched and written and how do we translate that into action? Mm -hmm. What would be the first yep. steps that um, political figures in Chicago uh, would take to initiate some of what you've researched and found out about the cost associated with uh, yes. violence? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Charlie, do that in about 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, uh, certainly I mentioned our, our positive peace framework approach and that can be used uh, uh, to influence at, at policy level as well can be used at community level to, to create change and I don't suggest it's one or the other, I suggest it should be both. Uh, using uh, sound research to influence uh, decision makers and uh, policy and resource, uh, resourcing decisions as well as influencing uh, uh, grassroots actors at community level. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Charlie, thank you. And we, we know that you served the Victoria Police uh, Force, working with people from diverse backgrounds. You have a lot of, you have a particular passion for helping police officers be more community-based in their approaches. Um, I hope this is not the last time we'll talk to you. We want to thank you for joining us here on the Shy Peace Show and all the best in everything that you do. Uh, thank you, Peter, and, and uh, thank you, Dr. Barner. Thanks for the invite. Most appreciated. Thank yes, you. Yes, thank you so much for calling. 
So here we have it, man, all the way from Australia, right? Talking about econ the economics and peace. And as we talk from the Urban Peace Lab to talk about how we can make peace profitable, the idea that peaceology is the scientific study and application of peace and peacefulness in multiple contexts with a belief that a major solution to violence and trouble is to make peace profitable. When we come back next time, Dr. Barney will tell you guys about, his es about escalating peace component that he adds to the, to the peaceology uh, part but meanwhile, we want to thank them. We want to thank our viewers. Thank right? you. For those of you who are listening so attentively, decided not to call, hopefully you'll call us next time. I'm Dr. Peter K.B. St. Jean, and he is... Dr. Ray Ford Barner. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.